Today we've come to explore and try and explain some of the rocks and landforms that we see along a section of North Taranaki coast at Mohakatino Beach. We've come down the side of the estuary of the river and we can only do that one to two hours either side of low tide. It's one of the most spectacular sections of coastline in New Zealand. So if we look at the beach here that we've been walking on, it's dense, heavy black sand, just like most of the beaches along the west coast of North Taranaki. Where is this black sand coming from? The iron mineral in here is titanomagnetite and it's eroding out of the volcanic ashes and lahar deposits of Mount Taranaki, which has been erupting itself for perhaps the last 1.5 million years, but particularly in the last 500,000. And that sand is being moved along the coast by longshore drift. And it goes for quite some distance up to the north. So the sandstone cliffs here were deposited on the floor of the sea about 10 million years ago. Microfossils in there tell us it was deposited at about 400 to 1,000 metres water depth on the slopes of ancient New Zealand. And 10 million years ago, there was a land bringing sand and mud down into the sea and being deposited in these layers, almost horizontal on the sea floor. So here we have some thick layers of slightly coarser sandstone here, and these slightly greyer layers are fine grained mudstone. In these rocks, you'll notice there's quite a, a pock marking of holes. Don't be deceived, these were only just made in the last few years by organisms living on the rocks, mostly into the sandstone. As you'll see, the mudstones are hardly pockmarked at all. So there are muds and sands that were deposited on the sea floor, and over time, more and more sediment was deposited on top of it on the sea floor, possibly up to 800 to 1,000 metres of sediment on top. So while most of the rocks around here have the layering almost horizontal, there are a few places like over here where the layering has been folded up and come right up to vertical. How do we explain this? Well these sediments were de deposited under the sea on a slope. So this was probably the sea level here and here's the slope and we've got land here eroding with sand and, and mud being carried into the sea. And it's being deposited on the slope all the way down here to a thousand odd meters depth. There may have been some shaking at some time and some of the sand and sediment here may have given way and started sliding down the slope and as they came to a rest they folded up until we get at the front of that block that's been sliding down folding up against another block here and so this is how we may have got the, the folded strata that we see in the cliff here. And then about five to four million years ago, this area started to be uplifted by tectonic forces. And all that rock layers above us have been eroded off in this area. And the seas have come in and also eroded the cliffs. And so all that younger rock has been eroded off and we're seeing inside the sea floor from 10 million years ago. Just down the coast from here, two or three kilometers, is a place called Jamroll Bay. And there we've got even more contorted and folded strata than we see here. And Julian's done a video with Suzanne Bull of this particular place with detailed explanations of how those folds were formed. So if you want to know more about these processes, go to that video. So we've seen a number of these large and small spherical concretions on the beach. We can see that they're eroding out of the cliffs. And because they're so hard, the soft sediment around them erodes away and the spherical concretion drops out and is left lying on the beach over time, gradually eroding away. Well, here's the sandstone and it's probably being deposited by a, a thick slurry of sand coming down the slopes of the sea floor. And as it's gone, that slurry has ripped up some of the mud on the sea floor as these little clasts and have been carried along. So they're called rip-up clasts of mudstone. And it's possibly these where the calcite has grown around it to become a big hard spherical concretions. And so this here has grown from a central portion outwards in all directions. And this growth is inside 
the voids between each of the sandstone grains. In this cliff here, you can see the inside of the concretion and you can see how it's grown in concentric layers outwards from that central point. Now if we look up in the cliff in the sea stack over here, we can see a beautiful example of two concretions that have grown right next to each other. And they've grown together and finally they've joined up. So we've got a double concretion in the cliff over there. And we've seen one or two of those smaller ones along the beach. So here we've got one, two, three concretions that are not quite spherical. They've got this line of softer rock through the middle. And this would appear to be parallel to the layering here in the sandstone. You can just pick out the layering that's almost horizontal. And probably uh, this layer here was slightly less permeable and the groundwater passing through was crystallizing in, in there and here, but this layer being less permeable, there was less crystallization in and so we've got this line parallel to the bedding through these concretions. Along this portion of coast, we find the sea caves are not going directly into the cliffs as the waves would go in, but are almost parallel to the cliffs. And that's because they're eroding along joint planes or fractures through the rock that are almost parallel to the cliff line. We can see in this arch, there were two fracture planes, one on either side there with those fairly smooth sides, and the erosion has gone along those, loosened them up, and then the sediment free rock in the middle has it dropped away in blocks and then been carried away by the tides. And we can see those same fractures coming right along, forming the cliff here and going into this cave behind me. So this cave is slightly different from many of them. It's almost perpendicular to the sea and the sea's been washing in here. And that's because it's not eroding along a fracture plane but roading along the bedding, which is vertical here. So up above me, there are a number of thin beds of mudstone, which are not as hard as the sandstone on either side. So the sea has eroded along and picked out that soft mudstone, creating the cave going in here. And there's another one here. And again, here's that soft mudstone that the sea is eroding along to create this little cave. So the first stage is forming a cave, the second it goes right through and forms the tunnel, the erosion, and then the next stage is that the arch over the top drops out and we get left with a sea stack. The final stage will be the sea stacks will get eroded away, fall over and disappear. Here we've got several concretions in the sandstone rock, but they're rusty coloured. It's a surface mineral that's been deposited over them an oxidized iron mineral. And where's that coming from? It's coming from up above here. So if we look around the corner and hop up in the cliff, we can see there's a sandstone which is rust colored. And the rusty color is the oxidation and hydrolysis of the iron minerals that are in there. And some of that's coming over the edge and down and staining the concretion here. So here in the cliff, about halfway up, we can see a horizontal line which separates the lower, harder sandstones which were deposited about 10 million years ago from the overlying sequence which appears to have been deposited during a high stand of sea level and are an old beach and sand dune deposit. That line between the two is an unconformable contact between the 125,000 year old beach deposits and the 10 million year old rocks beneath. So there's a big gap in time at that point. Right on that horizontal contact there, where there's been erosion, that was a shore platform about 125,000 years ago. And right on top of it, you can see there's some beach gravel and even some of the concretions like we've seen on the beach today are sitting on top of that contact. So that was an ancient beach 125,000 years ago and those concretions were eroding out of the cliffs. There are a few pebbles scattered around here. They're probably eroded out of that gravel layer that's up on top of the unconformity. And if we look at some of these pebbles and pick them up, a number of them are like this. This one's got black crystals in it of pyroxene, maybe hornblende, and it's obviously a volcanic rock andesite. The only place this could have come from is from 
Mount Taranaki. And cemented onto it, we've got other rounded small pebbles and even bits of shell, seashell, in amongst this. So again, this is more evidence that that layer just on top of the unconformity in the cliff was part of an ancient beach. But above that, we get into a lighter coloured sand that's a little bit more irregular in its bedding. And that appears to be windblown sand dunes just above high tide. And higher up again, we get a very dark uh, iron stained layer, which may be uh, a volcanic ash deposit, and then we're into the soils, which are indicating that these beach sands and sand dune deposits have been here for quite some time for that soil to develop and the ash to accumulate on top of it. And scientific dating has shown that these were deposited during the last interglacial around 120,000 years ago when sea level was five to six metres above present. But here those deposits are eight to ten metres above the present sea level, suggesting there's been two or three metres of uplift since they were deposited. With the drone, we can go up above the cliffs, and there behind, there's a big terrace, a coastal terrace that's 500 metres to a kilometre wide. And this used to be the shore platform and beach 125,000 years ago. If we go right to the back of this terrace, this, the land suddenly rises up. That's the ancient sea cliff from that time 125,000 years ago, and it would have been the back of the beach when the sea level was at its highest. So it's an uplifted shore platform that the main highway between New Plymouth and Hamilton runs along for many kilometres along this section of coast. We've enjoyed two hours wandering and exploring around this piece of coast. It's a spectacular place especially for photographers or families with young kids but do be careful about the tides. Make sure you only come here when the tide is low. No more than two hours either side of low tide so you can get round and get back again and enjoy the picturesque scenery of this wonderful piece of coastline of New Zealand.